TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Islamist Hamas organization proclaims that millions will march on Israel if a temple would be built on the grounds of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israel's outgoing government warns that the incoming government would root out its recently promoted woke narratives. Israeli designate Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu pledges to maintain the status quo and urges the outgoing government to stop its campaign of intimidations and lies. The Israeli security establishment's Operation Wazebreaker continues to bear fruit as Israel seeks to root out terror elements throughout the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley. IDF, ISA or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Units conducted counterterrorism activities overnight, during which a total of 10 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. It is worth noting that during the course of the operational activities, a number of riots were instigated in the villages of Beit Omar and Bitunia, the refugee camp of Kalandia, and the city of Nablus, to which the Israeli troops responded with crowd dispersal means. Moreover, while the Israeli forces exited the city of Nablus, Palestinian militants opened fire toward the withdrawing armored columns. Thankfully, no injuries were reported to the Israeli forces in any of the cited incidents. Meanwhile, in the Gaza Strip, the Islamist Hamas organization marked its 35th anniversary at a mega rally in Gaza City, during which the leadership of the internationally recognized terror group reaffirmed its commitment to destroy Israel. Speaking at the rally, leader of Hamas in Gaza, Yahya Sinwal, seized the opportunity to threaten the Jewish state over the designated government coalition of Benjamin Netanyahu warning against a process of so-called Judaizing the Al-Aqsa Mosque by turning it into a third temple. Sinwal went on to vow that any attempt to change the character of Jerusalem would be met by an army of millions. It is important to know that Yahya Sinwal's threats are hollow of substance, since his Islamist Hamas organization, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, is clearly deterred by Israel's qualitative edge. Regardless, it is also important to highlight that the state of Israel has no plans to build a third temple. With that being said, the designate internal security minister, Itamar ben Gvir, whose new ministerial portfolio will grant him executive powers over Israel's national police, which is effectively mandated with the security arrangements surrounding the Temple Mount, is proactively working to broaden his powers on matters of policy, despite designate Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's insistence that any matters of Israeli policy are ultimately set by him. Nevertheless, Ben Gvir has already submitted a bill that would amend police regulations, granting him, as minister, greater control over the police commissioner and police investigations. I am trying to understand what the law is changing, and to make sure that we can make a decision and a decision in relation to the change. The law, the law, I have told you already. The law, the law, the law, the law, the law. Despite an election pledged by Ben Gvir to grant police officers more freedom of action, including when it comes to the use of force, an internal security minister cannot directly intervene in operational execution of a policy. 
השר רשאי להתערב בהחלטות אסטרטגיות, לתת הנחיות כלליות ולהתוות את מדיניות המשטרה בעניינים בעלי חשיבות עקרונית, אבל הוא אינו רשאי להתערב בפרטי הביצוע האופרטיבי של המדיניות. It is important to know that the outgoing government of Premier Yair Lapid has launched a vigorous campaign against the new coalition partners of Benjamin Netanyahu, who are regarded as ultra-conservative right. Among others, outgoing education minister Ifat Shasha Biton, who promoted the integration of woke narratives into the Israeli education system, including by a new directive just last month forcing teachers to inquire with their students their preferred pronouns, alongside the insistence of the transitional government of Yair Lapid to force faculty members of elementary schools to undergo lectures from the so-called LGBTQ community in Israel. המאבק על מערכת החינוך של הילדים שלנו הוא חוצה מפלגות וגושים. זהו מאבק חברתי ערכי. כי החינוך של הילדים שלנו הוא באמת מעל הכל. מעוז לא רוצה לשמר את החינוך הממלכתי הישראלי כפי שהוא. הוא בכלל לא מכיר אותו. הוא מונע מאידיאולוגיה רדיקלית שרוצה להרוס את החינוך הממלכתי מבפנים. Joining in in voicing concern over an expected change in the curriculum forced upon teachers, chairwoman of one of the LGBTQ indoctrination groups, which sends lectures to schools, warned that it would supposedly force influence children back into ignorance. And הרצאות של תהילה מול צוות המורים, מול צוות היועצים, מול מנהלי בתי ספר, מול זה שמורים ובתי ספר יבינו שהם לא יכולים להתעלם מזה שיש ילדים להט"בים, היא בעייתית. שוב להכניס את הילדים לארון ולחשיכה. In response to the vigorous campaign which drew significant domestic media traction, The designate minister in charge of national Jewish identity, Avi Maoz, accused the outgoing government of engaging in a campaign of incitement to rebellion. In the last few days, a campaign of political campaign of the small government of Yair Lapid and the security against the Prime Minister and the decision of him to build a government. זהו קמפיין של המיעוט שהפסיד בבחירות כנגד רוב העם שאמר את דברו בצורה נחרצת בקלפי. הקמפיין הזה הוא לא פחות מהמרדה וניסיון למנוע מראש ממשלה מיועד להקים את הממשלה הנבחרת והלגיטימית היחידה לאחר הבחירות. Earlier this week, during a parliamentary session in which senior Likud member Yariv Levin was elected in term speaker of parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, outgoing Prime Minister Yair Lapid voiced outrage over the incoming government's expected composition based on information leaked from Netanyahu's coalition arrangements. <laughs> אבל הוא לא היה שר החינוך, כי הם נתנו את הסמכויות שלו לאנשים הכי קיצוניים במדינה. לשר הביטחון לא תהיה שליטה על הצבא ביהודה ושומרון. יושיבו לו שר במשרד שלא כפוף לו, יושיבו לו במטכ"ל אלופים ותתי-אלופים שלא הוא מינה, המתנחלים הכי קיצוניים יחלקו לצבא פקודות, זה מתכון לפיצוץ. אם אתם חושבים... Responding to Yair Lapid, designate Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu seized the opportunity to highlight that his yet-to-be-established government will aim to maintain the status quo. I request from my friends in הפחדות ושקרים. חברת הכנסת. אז אני רוצה להרגיע אתכם. אולי זה ירגיע אתכם. אולי לא תצעקו כל כך הרבה. יש ויהיה חשמל בשבת. יש ויהיו חופי רחצה לכולם. אנחנו נשמור על הסטטוס קוו. איש באמונתו יחיה. 
לא תהיה פה מדינת הלכה, תהיה פה מדינה שבה נדאג לכל אזרחי ישראל בלי יוצא מן הכלל. נבחרנו להוביל בדרך שלנו, דרך של הימין הלאומי ודרך של הימין הליברלי, וכך נעשה. תודה רבה לכם. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to start by congratulating TV7 for its 19th anniversary. I would also like to express our deep appreciation for TV7 Israel's family of supporters. TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry, and therefore, your financial contributions essentially enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.